If you plan on studying in the UK and you've received your acceptance, good for you. You've crossed the first hurdle. But if you've seen my previous videos, you would realize that the second hurdle is in terms of finding appropriate accommodation to live in the UK. And that can be a huge challenge. So in today's video, we're talking about why students find it difficult to find housing in the UK, what you need to do to ensure that you find housing, and the hacks that you can use to save money in the process. With that, I'm Ashika and let's dive in. Now, here's the thing. Post-COVID, students came to the UK from all over the world and in much higher numbers than I think they actually anticipated. And to be honest, I don't think the UK was prepared to deal with the challenge of those many students. Now, at the moment, there's such a shortage of rooms in the UK that you have students queuing up from even the previous night in order to book accommodation for the next year. And there's honestly a shortage of rooms everywhere. Students from Bristol were housed at Newport. Students from Manchester were in Liverpool. And students from York were housed in Hull. Many students were forced to either couch surf with their friends or live with their parents at quite a distance away or in all honesty, take up accommodation in rooms that were not great, like rooms without windows. The bottom line is there is a shortage of beds for students in the UK to the tune of 207,000 student beds. So ideally, what you need to do after you submit your UCAS application is to look for suitable accommodation. Now, the way to do it is to first understand what the options are. And the second option point is to find out which of these options is the most suitable option for you. In general, there are four main options. You can live in university managed accommodation, which is typically halls of residence. You can have privately owned halls of residence. You can live with other students in a privately rented house or flat or at home or in your case with friends or family if you've got any in the UK. But in order to make sure that you're actually making the right decision, you need to evaluate these options against some criteria. The first criteria is cost. Now, depending on the choices you make, accommodation could end up being really expensive for you or could work out to be quite affordable. So what you'll ideally need to have is an idea of how much you are willing and able to spend for accommodation. The contract for accommodation is usually for 40 weeks. Now, assume you are spending £100 a week. So then you're looking at a total of approximately £4,000. If you've gotten yourself a scholarship, you should ideally check if the cost of accommodation is covered under your scholarship. If you're on a student loan, you should check whether you can afford to spend this much, whether you can increase or you need to lower your budget. Now, remember to evaluate your options. University accommodation might not be the fanciest and you might have to share a bathroom, but it does come with a lot of perks. Now, something else for you to consider is the facilities being offered. Some accommodation options will allow you the option of fully cooked meals, getting your laundry done, not having to share a bathroom amongst others. Others might allow you to meet a lot more students and thus make a lot more friends. So it's important to understand what your needs are and make a decision according to that as well. Some students don't want to share their bathroom. They enjoy their own privacy while making the best use of all the facilities being offered. Now, if you're one of them, you should definitely consider Amber, which has more than 800 properties across the UK. It's also got a price match guarantee, one-on-one -on -one expert guidance, and fast and easy bookings. Now, I'll leave a link over here in the description below if you'd like to check out some of the properties that they're offering. But before I move ahead, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and click on the bell icon for notifications. Now, the next thing you'll definitely want to consider is the location or the distance from your university. While staying further away from your university or from a city, can save you in terms of rent, it can also cost you in terms of transport while getting to your university. If you choose to stay further away and if you can walk or bike to your university, that's absolutely brilliant. Something else you should keep in mind is that if you are looking for accommodation further away from your university, the first thing you need to do is ensure that the area that you're looking at is a safe area for you to live in. And apart from that, you should also ensure that the commute to wherever you're going to live is going to be safe because there might be times when you come back late from your university if you've had some work and you shouldn't put yourself in a position which is unsafe. Another thing you should keep in mind is what kind of an area you live in in terms of amenities. Do they have a lot of shops? Do they have entertainment options? Is it a place you don't mind living in during the holidays? Now, let's talk about how you can actually get the accommodation. In a lot of cases, the accommodation will be first come first serve, so you'll need to be really quick. Most universities will begin accepting applications for accommodation after the UCS applications have come in. So you should wait for that and you should also keep checking their website to see when you can start applying for accommodation and be ready with that date. Also, you should be aware that a lot of universities have a deadline for applying for accommodation, which is well before the course start date. It's usually around the start of August, so don't put it off for the last minute and actually apply well in advance. 
months. A lot of universities have also published guides on their websites on how you can get accommodation around the university or at the university. So do look out for that as well. But remember, if none of these things are working out for you, do reach out to your university's accommodation office and ask them for help. Many universities also have the option of virtual tours or accommodation open days. But if you can't make it for an accommodation open day, make sure you check out the virtual tours, check the photos, check the floor layouts, any videos they may have, and also go to the extent of reaching out to existing students or alumni to get a better idea of what your life will be like once you're staying there. Now, if you decide not to go with university accommodation and you decide to opt for private accommodation instead, you'll either need to go through an agency or through landlords. And if you're looking at agencies, Amber is a really great option, like I just mentioned. The important thing that you do need to remember is to get a written contract. If you decide to use the services of an agency, the documents you will need to provide are references, which prove that you're enrolled at a university, a UK guarantor form in case you fail to pay your rent, a bank statement and a signed rental contract. Many private houses and flat shares in London also require you to pay one month's rent as a deposit, which you'll receive at the end of your contract, in addition to one month's rent in advance. Now, if you've been struggling to find accommodation for quite some time, these are some options you can try. First up, find housemates. If you're aware of more people who are in similar situations like you are and are also looking for shared accommodation, you can obviously stay together if that works out for you because then you have the option of looking at more places when you're looking at rentals. The second thing is try social media. Try Facebook, try Twitter and try the Nextdoor app because believe it or not, there are more people out there like you looking for accommodation so you can obviously find a lot more of them and then team up. The next two app is particularly useful because it usually looks at the certain area that you're looking at and gives you accommodation advice based on that or posts recommended based on that. The third thing, try your students union. They'll often have guides about reliable agencies in the area and they'll give you really good recommendations and tips on what to look out for. And the fourth thing is hit up a student accommodation forum. There are forums for everything from mums looking out and talking about crime to people actually trying to sell cars. So there will definitely be a forum for students looking for accommodation just like you. And more often than not, you'll actually find somebody from your university who you can then team up with. Now, another thing for you to remember is that life in the UK can get expensive. So if you're looking on saving some money in this entire process, here are some tips you can consider. University student halls can get expensive. So instead of that, consider looking out for private accommodation, which you can share with some friends or students students like you so that you can split the rent and then you can split the cost of the groceries in the house you can cook your own meals to save money and it actually works out to saving you quite a bit the second thing is get a part-time job a lot of students actually most students in the uk work while they are studying to help meet those smaller expenses and there are plenty of options available for students so don't worry look out for those jobs if you have the option of friends or family in the uk consider if you can stay with them because it can help you save quite a lot of money and instead you can contribute to small expenses to help with their household and the fourth option is living further away for instance if your university is in london consider living in reading it's only 30 minutes away the rents are drastically lower than london and it'll save you a lot and because it's a city by itself it has all the amenities you would need and it has a very easy commute now remember as soon as you move to the uk there's a bunch of things you absolutely need to do once you come here and the good thing is i've already created a list on everything you need to do for more info watch this